Okay, Rabbi, we are live. Okay, Boker Tov. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, I don't have the mic here. I should have. Should I have taken the mic? You're ready to go. Okay. I hear you perfectly. Okay, great. So, uh, first of all, Boker Tov and Mazal Tov to all, all, everyone in the world who finished Mesechet Shabbat. Ezat Hashem will be having a siyum probably on Motzei Shabbat. Details will follow. Uh, we are um, very, very excited to learn, to embark on this great, uh, continue the journey of Shabbat with the, the fences, the preservance of Shabbat is Erevin. Erevin <coughs> is a continuation basically of Shabbat, of the Lech Melachav Hotza'ah, this shir uh, and this mesechtan, this shir is ilu nishmat the adin Evan Yisrael ben Abraham and the vorefega bat Shmuel Menachem Mendel ben Elchanan. Just as a short uh, introduction to our parak here. We have to know a few small details about a Mavui, Rishut Arabim, Chatzer, and then we can start. <coughs> it does get some somewhat challenging, you know, details and technicalities, but the first daf is not uh, very difficult. So let us begin. Good morning, D Daniel. It's great seeing you. Okay. Oh, Daniel's on? Yeah. Oh, Daniel. Big schut, big uh, simcha here. Where's Daniel? Hey! Hey, David. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, David, too. And good morning, Lior. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're going to speak, speak about this chatzer. This is a chatzer. Oh, this is a chatzer in the Rishut Rabim. This is a chatzer built on the side of the Rishut Rabim. Rishut Rabim is an area that's 16 amot wide, and there's many passed by, many people that pass by, and that is, of course, a steward to carry four amot inside there. They also may not carry from Rishut Yachid to Rishut Rabim, and vice versa. There were chatzerot that were surrounded, there was a courtyard surrounded by walls, which were Rishut Yachid, 100%, and people lived there, there were homes. Now, when you exited the home, this is very important. You may have a picture of it in your Gemara. You were in the Chatzar. The Chatzar led into an alleyway, a small street, which is called a Mavui. And from that Mavui, that Mavui led into the Rishut Arabi. Now, we'll be speaking primarily about the Mavui now, at least now, that is not Mifulash. Mifulash means that it's flush, it goes through and through. That one we're not speaking about today. We'll speak, we'll speak about the one that really ends at one side. It's like a cul-de-sac. And therefore, the Mavoy was surrounded by three sides, which according to most Rishonim, is a Rishut HaYachid itself. And there shouldn't be any issue in carrying. There isn't. Midoraita. According to almost all the Rishonim, it's Midoraita. It's a Rishut HaYachid, the private domain, just like the courtyard since it's surrounded by three walls. And the last, the fourth side is open into the Rishut Arabim. So everything should be fine. But <clears throat> the Chachamim came along and they said, since the, all the courtyards that share this little alleyway in between, all the people that live in these courtyards always use this street so it's very similar to Rishut Rabin. And the Chachalim are worried that allowing people to carry in the side of this Mavui will cause a Michshol. They're going to start carrying in the Rishut Rabin itself as well. Others say it a little bit differently. Not that people will make a comparison, say if you're allowed to carry here, you're allowed to carry there but more that it was interconnected since everybody is carrying inside the Mavui. 
and the Mavui is open right into the Rishat Rabim. So, and it looks like it's all part of one, just perpendicular, but it's all one uh, big street. You know, this street leads into that street, and everything is Rabim, Rabim, because the masses are in both. Therefore, they were worried that one would come to carry from the Rishut HaYechid into the Rishut HaRabim or vice versa. Okay? And, and that would be a real problem. Why? Because Min HaTorah, the Mavui is a Rishut HaYechid. And it's, therefore you can't carry it from there into the Rishut HaRabim or vice versa. That's is through the Oraita. That's how other Rishonim say. But whatever the story is, the Chachamim made a Takana. And they said, that in order for you to carry inside the Mavui, you have to have, you have to have placed something at the entrance of the Mavui to show that this area has nothing to do with the next area. This street that leads into the Rishut Rabim is one thing, and the Rishut Rabim is something else. Now, what, what is that called? That's called a one. The first way they said you can do it is called a lechi. A lechi is a vertical stick. And that stick doesn't have to be um, any size, no size. As long as it's standing close enough to one of the edges of the entranceway that open up into Rishut Rabim, then that's good enough. Um, <coughs> And it's, it has to, there's only one condition. It has to be within three tfachim of the entranceway, and it has to be ten tfachim high. But how wide and thick it has to be, there's no size. It can be a very thin stick. As long as it's placed vertically, ten tfachim high, within three of the entranceway, that is a beautiful sign, a hacker. Or a mechitza, actually. It's, even, it's a little more accurate to say that by the lechi. It's actually, we see it as if it's closed off. And the Chachamim said, close off the fourth side with the lechi. That way, people will say, why is there a lechi here always? Aha, so you closed it off. Ah, you closed it off. That's why I'm allowed to carry here. Otherwise, we can't carry here. That's the Chachamid Rabbana. Another way to be matir permit carrying there is by using a kora. A kora is a beam and the beam is placed above the entranceway from one side of the entrance to the other side of the entrance. Okay, I'm sure you all have pictures there that show that the beam to you. Um, otherwise I would show you the, uh, maybe Anna doesn't have but he knows exactly what it is. It is. I don't know if you're able to, are you able to see. Amnon, could you see it? Yeah, I see it. That's the kora. The kora is a, a beam that's placed from one side to the other. And actually, the kora has a minimum in its size. It has to be one tefach wide. We'll see about that later in the Gemara, a few weeks from now. And it has to go across the entire entranceway. Um, how it works that you put these two things up. Now, so, suddenly... Why were the Chacham satisfied with that? What does that do exactly? You will see throughout the Gemara, the Gemara speaks about it, it's if it works because it actually creates a mechitza, like an enclosure, a partition, or it works as a hacker. Hacker means just, it makes people aware as a sign, like a flashing light, ki'ilu. Oh, you know, now you say, okay, why don't they just put up a candle or a light? It's not so simple. It's, 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 there, there's more lumbus inside. There's more, there's more uh, mechanics to understand how this works, even if it's a hacker. But that was the hacker that they created. And it reminds people that the mother is not a Rishus Rabbi. Don't carry in here. Just because you're carrying in here, don't carry the Rishus Rabbi. Or don't carry from the mother to the Rishus Rabbi or Rishus Rabbi to the mother. Here you can do it, there you can. If you don't put any of these two things up, then there's an Isur with Rabbanan to carry inside the mother. There is one other way 
that you can also fix the this problem, this last entrance, the, excuse me, the last uh, side, the fourth side, which is an entry into the Shutrabim, can be corrected by making the Tzurat HaPetach. Tzurat HaPetach means the form, literally, of an entranceway. You create an entrance out of this opening. What do you do? You place two, two vertical sticks this way, and then you place a stick going across. Okay, like a doorpost. Okay, now that is an actual mechitza mid the oraita. That's not just going to work mid the rabbanan. The rabbanan made a problem in the mavui and they fixed it by making their own type of correction with a lechi or a kora. This is actually a real enclosure, which means it's as if you just closed off the fourth side. And the reason why it's like that, what do you mean? I don't see any closure. I can walk right through. The answer is because once you create an entrance way, that's what Surat HaPetach, should, uh, the, the translation is you're creating a, a real um, entry by, by, by building two sides, the doorposts, and the top, the lintel, whatever, right? Therefore, we view it as an entry. Now, an entry, an entry is really never, is never viewed as a breach, as a whole. Which means I can have an enclosure, just as an example. I don't want to speak too much about this because right, that's not today's bath, but just, just for the sake of the introduction, you can have a long, the Great Wall of China. That's a great enclosure. The fact that you find a hole in, in it or, or like one area that's breached doesn't really give it, um, doesn't make, doesn't ruin the partition, the enclosure. As long as we view that, that opening as an entryway, entryways are part of the enclosure. You have to be able to get in and out. Otherwise, how are you going to have just have a wall surrounding a compound? And now what? How could you get in and out? So, therefore, if you make the tapetach, everything is fixed as well. And we view the mavui as totally enclosed. And, and therefore, a person may carry in the mavui with the tzura tapetach as well. Let's begin the mesechta now inside. Dr. Heligen Mishnah says the Mishnah Kedosha. Mavui shuhu gavoa me esrin ama. A mavui, this alleyway, this street, that runs in between the Chatserot. If anybody has a question they didn't understand, please ask me. But um, also, time is a little bit of the essence now. <clears throat> so let's... Um, okay, let's move on. A mavi that is higher than 20 amot, yimayet. Lower it. So here the mission introduces a new problem. It's all nice and fine uh, for you to put that color, that beam, across the entryway to create this awareness that the Chachamim required in order for, so that you can carry inside the mavi. But if the entrance height, right, of these two sides is higher than 20 amot, you have to lower it. What do you have to lower? <clears throat> you have to lower the beam. Place the beam at, an, a, a, at a point that is lower than 20 amot. As long as the beam across the two sides is... <laughs> using that beam instead of using the vertical stick you're using the beam the kora we call it as long as it's higher than 20 amot it will not correct the issue and you won't be able to carry inside this mavui so you have to lower lower it that you says no no need no need even a kora higher than 20 amot is fine We'll see what they argue about in the Gemara. Bezrat Hashem. What about if there is an, an, this alleyway? 
that its entrance is, now we're talking about the width, is more than 10 amot in width, which is about 20, 18 to 20 feet wide, yima'et. Now you have to lessen and mitigate the entryway to what? Down to 10 amot. Because more than 10 amot, even though I told you before, every, every compound and every wall needs an entryway, so we don't view the entryway as a total breach and a breaking of the, of the partition, of the, of the enclosure. But that's only up to 10 amot. More than 10 amot, let's say I have a, if it's about 20 feet wide, so it's now more than 10 amot, 22 feet wide. So you have this beautiful wall, and then the fourth side is right surrounded by three sides, and the last side is open to the Shutabim, and it's open more than 10 amot wide. So now, even if you put the Kora, even if you place that beam across the two sides of that entryway, it won't work. It won't correct the issue, and you will not be allowed to carry inside the mavli, unless you lessen, you mitigate the size by putting a lot of beams and boards until it becomes 10 amot wide. Now that it's 10 amot wide, that is, that is not a breach. That is just a normal entryway, and the entryway needs to be fixed by creating a kora, putting a kora across the two sides. Then you're in business. There's another way to fix it. Says the, and the, the last way to fix it is the best way. Says the Mishnah. Even if you have a petach, even if it's more than ten amot, it doesn't need to be fixed. But if it has the form of an entryway, because you placed two st- sticks on one side and one stick going across horizontally from one one of the two sticks, right? From the two sticks that are sitting vertically, you place one beam or stick across those two. Now you created the form of an entryway. Now, even if it's more than 10 amot wide, we still view it as an entrance and not as a breach. So you can have it 20 amot wide. And we just said a minute ago that if it's 20 amot wide, then that cannot be corrected with the le- with the kora across or the lehi, and the Mishnah says that's true. So either short uh, mitigate minimize the, 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 the breach or create an entryway, create an entryway, an entrance in those twenty amot, and then we view the entire opening not as a big breach in the partition, a breach in the enclosure, but rather as a large and wide entranceway. And then, what's the difference between an entryway that has a Quran top or a Tzorat Adelet, a Tzorat Petach? Because the Tzorat Petach, the, the Korah doesn't really create an entrance. The, the Korah just reminds you, or, or it creates a Mechitza, Somewhat, but it cannot create a machitza on such a large breach. Okay, because that was made up by the Chachamim. But the Tzurit Petach, which is Be'etzen, essentially a real entrance because you're creating an entrance. It's not just calling it, oh, you see that big hole in the wall? That's my that's the way I get in and out. But but rather it's normal, that's the way you have entrances, because you have two sides, two sides. So therefore that can work even really create an entrance even more than 10 amot. Okay? Good. So to wrap up the Mishnah, just to say it again very quickly, if the Korah only works within 20 amot, not higher than 20 amot, we'll soon see why, according to the Chachamim, Rabbi Yehuda argues, and he says it could be even higher than 20 amot, and in the width, the width has to be not more than 10 amot, of that of that of that opening on the fourth side of the mavui, 
and the Koru can't work unless there's a Tzuret HaPetach. Okay. So now, says the Gemara. This Gemara, uh, we have the exact same Gemara, basically, in the, at the beginning of Sukkot. Masechet Sukkah. Tanan Hatam Sukkah Shigavod Amalame Esem Amav Sula. Rabbi Yehuda Machshir. The same Machloka that we have here by the Korah, in order to fix the Mavui, we have the first Mishnah in Sukkah concerning how high a Sukkah, how high the Schach can be. It says there, if it's higher than 20 Amot, same numbers. Psula. Rabbi Yehuda Machshir. Rabbi Yehuda says, no problem. Like here. Like he said here. So the Gemara says, there's a discrepancy in the language that's used from the Tana over there and the Tana here. My Sukkah, the Chachamim say, Pasul. Here, they say what to do, how to correct it. They don't say Pasul. Mavri that's too high, and you put a place the corner too high, is Pasula. They say, you might. They tell you what to do. Lower it. So why don't they do the same thing in Sukkah? Or the opposite. Why don't they do the same thing um, here? Either say Pesulah here or say Yemayit over there. So Gemara answers as follows. Sukkah the Oraita Tani Pesulah. Sukkah that is the Oraita, you can say Pasul, meaning if you don't fix it, what is it? The Torah makes it Pasul. Because the mid oraita, the sukkah has to be lower than 20, according to the Chachamim. So you can say, um, Sulah, because everybody knew that this measurement from the times of Moshe Rabbeinu on Harsina already, Rashi says. Mavui de Rabbanan Tanitakanta. But a Mavui that is mid Rabbanan, it says what to do. Why? Because the whole halach, all the halachot of Mavui, that you need the Korah in the first place, are Midrabanan. Midoraita, there's no issue. You can carry here. You're not really doing anything. There's no issue. So therefore, you cannot say that if you don't have the Korah within 20, it's Psula. What Psula? This is the first time we're telling you that there's a halacha, that you have to have a Korah if you want to carry there. It sounds like, oh, it's Pasul, it's already disqualified. For what? For which halacha? Here's where you introduce the halacha, of Erevin, of such a, of, of this, of, of fixing the Mavoy. There's no halacha before this. So you can't say Pisulai, it's the old problem. What old problem? So therefore, when you t- in order to introduce that there is a problem, you tell me, listen, if you have a beam across this opening on the fourth side, and it's higher than 20, and you want to carry there, let me tell you what to do. Lower it. This is how you tell me that if you don't, it's now now that you told me to lower it, now I know that it's pasul if I don't. <laughs> First you gotta tell me what to do, and now I'll know that there's a psul. Okay. I hope that was clear. So therefore, that's why we use a different language. Or you could say like this. No. Even on the writers on Sukkah, the Tano would have liked to say. He would have liked to use the language of what to do because that's very direct and it tells you what to do. It doesn't just say psula. It tells you lower it, which is a very nice language. You can use that for the writers too. But you want to know why we didn't do that? By sukkah. There's many things in that Mishnah. The Mishnah there says um, you can't have it higher than 20. And then the Mishnah goes on and says you also cannot um, have it have more sunlight than shade and you can't have um, it can't be less than three tfachim, uh, than ten tfachim high the walls or the, the srach and it needs to have three walls okay so now on each one if I would start telling you how to correct each one there would be different instructions for each one the one that's too high lower the one that's too low higher the one that it's too much sunlight, put more schach on to make it more shade. So the Mishnah would go on and on with all those sorts of different instructions. Therefore, the Tana, it's not his way. Rashi says, because the person should always teach his Talmidin in a short way, the concise, short way, so they remember the halacha. 
So therefore, he just consolidates all the halachas into one din called psula. They're all possible. But in the halachas of Mavui, in our Mishnah, where there's only one halacha here, basically, two, tonitek or two, tonitek anto. So it tells you what to do. Just tells you, yimayet, lower it, lower the kota. Okay, that was, Gemara had to get through that lushan of yimayet. But now the Gemara begins understanding the opinions in the Mishnah. Again, the, the opinion of the Chachamim, that's the Tanakam, we call them the Rabbanan, the Chachamim, they hold that the Korah cannot be higher than 20 Amot. We, we don't know why yet. The Yehuda argues, Omarav Yehuda Omarav, Chachamim lo bimdu el mipitcho shalhecha. You know where the Chachamim know their halacha from? From the entrance of the Hecha. But Rabbi Yehuda lo limdu el mipitcho shalula. Rabbi Yehuda learned it from the entrance of the ulam, which means each one learned a source. If I want to know, how do, what's a petach? How high can a petach be? How high can this entrance be? So the Chachamim found the entryway to the Heichal and, and in the Torah, which was 20 amot and not more. Rabbi Yehuda learned it from a different petach of the ulam. What is the ulam? What is the heichel? So just to, as a quick reminder to everybody, in the Beit HaMikdash, there were three parts. There was the Kodesh HaKadosh, that was the most inner sanctuary where they had the Ara and the Kruvim. Right next to that was the heichel. I don't know what they call it in English. I think, I guess, the, the, not the most inner sanctuary, but the sanctuary, the heichel, where they had the Mizbeach HaZahav and the Shulchan, for the 12 loaves of bread in the menorah. And then they have the ulam. The ulam was the antechamber, which was like basically a long hallway. It was extremely high, about almost 80 feet high. Okay? That's about 40, 40 amot high. Good morning, Joe. And uh, good morning, Menachem. Menachem, if you want to be in here, you have to be very quiet. Very quiet. Yes. So, just a half a second. So sorry. Amnon, how are you? Amnon, commercially. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be there soon. Okay, so, sorry. So um, what we have here is like this. So now you have the Heichel, that's, then you have the, the, the Ulam. The Ulam is this antechamber that goes into the Heichel. Now, that is, that is that's, that's what's going on over here. The Oyel Moed in the Torah, the tent of meeting, is referring to the Heichel. Because we find, Rashi says, that every time... The Torah speaks about um, going and doing the Avoidah on the Mizbeh Chazov and by the Shulchan and by the Menorah, which were all in the Heichel. It refers to it as the Ohel Moed. Okay, now, let's continue in the Gemara. You'll understand much better when the Gemara speaks a little more. The Tanan. We learned to the Mishnah in Midot. The entrance of the Heichel was 20 Amot high and 10 Amot wide. Everybody understanding everything? Is it clear? Great. So the entrance of the Hechel was 20 amot high and 10 amot wide. Vishal Ulam, but the antechamber which led into the Hechel from the Azara, the Azara is where we had the, 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 the main Mizbeach, the large Mizbeach, 
from the Azara led into the antechamber, which led you into the Hechel, was Gavo Abaim Amav Rachbo Esrim Amot. That was 40 Amot high, and 20 is double, double in height, double in the width, 20 Amot wide. So the Chachamim, they said, you know what a Petach is? A Petach is the Petach of the Hechel. You, there's, no, there's no such a thing as the Petach of the Ulam. We don't find a Pasuk that describes an entranceway to the Ulam. And therefore, the most I can get is the petach of the Hechel, which was 20 amot high. Both man the Omrim learned it from one, the same one pasuk. They argued about one pasuk. The pasuk there speaks about the carbon shlam. And it says, You shall slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting, or el moed. Okay? Now the oil moed, Obviously, that pasuk is speaking about the Mishkan, right? There was no Beit HaMikdash yet. But it's, it corresponds because the Oel Moed in the Mishkan is like the Heichel in the Beit HaMikdash. It's both, both, in both of them, whether you had the small Mishkan or you had the large Beit HaMikdash, they were all, the Oel Moed was the place where you had those three Kalim, the Shulchan, the Menorah, and the Mizbech Azov. And it says you slaughter the carbon shlomim at the entrance of the oil moid. The Rabbanon Savi Kedushas Eichel Luchud Kedushas Ulam Luchud. The Rabbanon hold that the Kedusha of the Heichel is not like the Kedusha of the Ulam, which means the Ulam's Kedusha, its holiness, is less than the Heichel because it's only the lead way into the entranceway, into the Hechel. And therefore, if you do any of the Avodot, they have to do in the Hechel. Let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to do it here in the Ulam. Right? I'll light the menorah here. In the, okay, whatever. I'll do. Whatever you have to do in the Hechel, you do it in the Ulam, doesn't work. So therefore, when it says the entrance you have to you slaughter the shlomim, which is all the way in the Azara, at the entrance of the oil moid, like opposite the entrance of the oil moid. It doesn't mean the entrance of the ulam. It means the oil moid, and there's only one oil moid according to the Chachamim, the tent of meeting. The ulam is a very beautiful holy place that leads into the hechel, but it's not the oil moid. It's not the hechel itself. So the entrance to the oil moid means the entrance to the Ohel Moed. After you go through the Ulam, and now you're by the entrance to the actual Ohel Moed. Let's look at that one. So what is that Petach? So the Torah is referring to the Petach of that Hechel. That's 20 Amot high. That's it. So from there we derive that a Petach, an, a petach, an entranceway, is 20 Amot high, and not more than that. The Chiktiv Petach Ohel Moed, the Hechel Ktiv. Rabbi Huda Savra, Hechel of Ulam Kedusha Achati. No, Rabbi Huda says, the Hechel and the Ulam are all one Kedusha. What you could do in the oil moed, you could do in the Ulam. The Ulam is also the oil moed. The lead way into the Hechel has the same Kedusha already. And therefore, when the Torah says to slaughter the Shlamin outside, opposite the entrance of the oil moed, it's referring to the Ulam as well. The petach of the oil moid means the entrance to the whole oil moid, whatever you give the status of oil moid, which is even the ula. And therefore, if the Torah is referring to the petach of the ulam as well, the petach of the ulam was 40 amot high. And that's why Rabbi Yehuda allows the entrance to the mavui to be much higher than the uh, <coughs> than 20 amot. And so, so therefore, he doesn't, he doesn't require anybody to lower the Korah. The Korah can be higher than 20 Amot, and we can still view it as an entryway. Okay, good. Says the Gemara, Another Pshad is like this. Even Rabbi Yehuda agrees that, you, that the Ohel Moed is only the Ohel Moed. And when the Torah says Ushrato Petach Ohel Moed, it's referring to only the Hechel, which was only 20 Amot high. 
So the hocha high new time that Rabbi Yehuda dechtir el petach ulam abayit. The reason why Rabbi Yehuda says that you can a petach can also be much more than twenty amot is not from the pasuk of ushchato petach olamod because that one he would agree is referring to the petach uh, that's only twenty amot high of the hechel, but he actually derived it from a different pasuk which is speaking about a different entranceway, and that entranceway was the entranceway to the Ulam. There's another pasuk in Navi, which says, El petach ulam habayit. Now the truth is, the Rishonim said there's no such pasuk in Navi, but it's really a compound, you know, it's made up of one pasuk that says, Ulam habayit, and one pasuk says, Petach habayit. So they're dashing it as if it says, Petach ulam habayit, the entrance to the Ulam. So, therefore, the Gemara is saying, you see that there's, there's a pasuk um, that <clears throat> will be there in a minute. That picture, we're not up to that picture yet, but in a minute. Right. So, thank you. Oh, that's the picture up there. So, therefore, the petach of the ulam, the petach of the ulam, um, is described in the Pasuk, and therefore, that Petach, which is 40 Amot high, is, is, is fine for Rabbi Yehuda. What did the Rabbanon answer? If Rabbanon, he have a Katav El Petach Ulam, Kedika Amrit. Hashad Dekhtiv El Petach Ulam Abayit, Abayit HaPatuach LaUlam. And the way the, the Ritva is explained, the Gemara's uh, rebuttal is as follows. The Chachom say, look, it's not really a Pasuk. You're putting two Pasukim together. If it would have said um, this pasuk, then fine, al petach ulam abayit. But really, it says ulam abayit in one pasuk and petach abayit in another pasuk. So therefore, when it says ulam habayit, it really is referring to the hechel. The ulam of the bayit doesn't mean of the bayit that's that's, a, that's an ulam. The ulam is not considered a bayit, and therefore the petach is not the petach of of that ulam. It's really referring to the Hechel, and therefore the Petach Abayit in the other Pasuk is referring to the Hechel and not to the Ulam, and therefore we don't have a Pasuk that ever says the word Petach, entrance, to the Ulam. That's what the Chachamim say. Okay. So the Gemara says, um, but, but, but just before we go to the next point of the Gemara, they're arguing here, if you have a Pasuk, for the petach ha'ulam and not just for the petach ha'hechel. Says the Gemara, the problem is, there wasn't an ulam in the Torah. In the Torah, they had a mishkan. And in the mishkan, there was no ulam. This picture here is only in the Beit HaMikdash. However, in the, in the, in the mishkan, um, the petach of the old moid was only 10 amot. Okay, now it wasn't even 20 amot. The Gemara is asking even on the Chachamim. How high was the Mishkan? As high as the, the, the famous Krashim, the beams. They were only 10 amot high. So the entryway, forget about Rabbi Huda that said 40 amot is fine. Higher than 20 to 40 is fine. And f- but even the Chachamim that said 20 amot is way too high. Because in the Mishkan, in the Torah, when the Torah says Ushchato Petach Ohel Moed, that entryway was an entrance only to the Ohel Moed, which the height was ten amot, as the Kroshomor. Therefore, the Gemara is asking on everyone. So the Gemara answers Ashke Chamishka the Ikri Migdash or Migdash the Ikri Mishka. It's not a problem, says the Gemara. Why? Because even though the Torah is referring to the Mishkan and it says slaughter it at the entrance of the Ohel Moed. But everything that's in the Mishkan is in the Mikdash, and the Torah is referring to the Mikdash as well, because we find the Mishkan is called Mikdash, and we find the Mikdash is called Mishkan. And therefore, even though the main Pasuk is mainly speaking about the Petach Ohel Moed of the Mishkan, which is only 10 Amot high, but it's as if it was written about the Beit HaMikdash in the future, which was 
and its petach or hemoid to its hechel was actually 20 hemoid high. The evil term, because if you don't say so, how the Amra of Yehuda Amr Shmuel, Shtanim Sheshachtan Kudem, Tichat Dal Tot Haichal, Psulin, Shenem Rushato Petach or Moed. Bizman Sheptuchim, Velo Bizman Shenu Lim. Rav Yehuda says the name of Shmuel, that if you come to the Beit HaMikdash and you slaughter a carbon shlomin at a time that the doors of the Beit HaMikdash are not yet opened, it's disqualified. Because the Torah said, Ushchato Petach, at the entrance of El Moed, which means at the time that they're opened, the doors are open, at night they would lock them, they would close them. And only when they're opened up in the morning is the right time to slaughter. And not at the time that they are locked. <laughs> Why did he learn such a halacha? That pasuk is in the times of the Midbar, when there was only a Mishkan. Who told you that that halacha applies to the Beit HaMikdash as well? It must be that when the Torah says halacha to the Mishkan, it's referring to the Beit HaMikdash, because the Mikdash is called Mishkan, and the Mishkan is called Mikdash. So the Gemara says, okay, I find, I find that the Beit HaMikdash is called the Mishkan. But that's not good enough for me. And how do I know that? I will place my Mishkan amongst you. Now, at that time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu was telling Moshe Rabbeinu everything from the Oral Moed, from the Mishkan. So what does that mean? I will place my Mishkan in the future. Amongst you. Obviously, that Mishkan is referring to something that they don't have yet, which is the Beit HaMikdash. There we have it, that the Beit HaMikdash is called Mishkan. El Mishkan the Ikri Mikdash Minalam. But where do we ever find that, that the Mishkan is called Mikdash? Because it says that the people in Kahat lift up the Mikdash. Ah, they lift up the Mikdash. What Mikdash? There is no Beit HaMikdash. So you see that the Mishkan is called Mikdash. So the Gemara says, that's not a proof. That is specifically by the Aron. It doesn't mean that the Mishkan is called Mikdash. It's speaking of specifically about the Aron, which is holier than all the other vessels. And that's why it calls it Mikdash. Ella rather mehachot the also the mikdash v'shechanti betocham. It says, "Make me a mikdash, and I will dwell." That is the command to make a kadosh baruch Hu, to build a mishkan, and and a kadosh baruch Hu calls it a mikdash. So there we have it, Rabotai. The mishkan is called mikdash, and basically the Gemara is saying that although the actual mishkan in the midbar was only ten amot high. But when it says the entrance to the Ohel Moed, it's also referring to the future Beit HaMikdash, where the entrance to the Ohel Moed there was 20 amot high. Okay? According to the Chachamim. Rabbi Yehuda has another pasuk that he learned in Pesach Ulam, that the entrance to the Ulam is really referred to as a Petach. And therefore he derives from there that a Petach will be as high as the Ulam, which should be 40 amot. Um, says the Gemara. Um, you know what? Let me use the restroom for 30 seconds. I'm really sorry.
Okay, thank you. Says the Gemara. Bein l'rabon, bein l'rabi Yehuda. Levu mi pesach shar hechotzer. Who told them? Who told the Chachamim and Rabbi Yehuda that learned the petach from the word in a pasuk? By the way, you can never say anything with svara. Just you know, make something up unless there's a real svara, real logic. But if you don't, you have to find like there. There's no real svara. There's no real logic about what an entrance way is. You have to find a source of a, of what Hashem said. So the Gemara is asking. Rabbanan and Rabbi Huda, who told them to learn um, from the petach of the Heichal or the Ulam. By the way, how do we know the, we, now we're going to speak about the width. The width of the petach, we said the height is 20, according to the Chachamim. And what's the width? The width is 10. That's what the Mishnah said. Now, how would you know that? Because of the same pasuk, petach of the Heichel. How high was the Heichel? 20. And how wide was it? It was 10 wide. As the Mishnah Midot said, the first Mishnah the Gemara brought down, pitro shel Heichel gavo esim amavirach bo eser amot. The Ulam, however, was double in its height and double in its width, 40 and 20. So the Chachamim in our Mishnah say 10 amot wide. So the Gemara asks, Who gave you the right to learn from the petach, the width of the petach of the Heichel or the Ula? The Shar HaChatzer was the, the gateway to the Chatzer, to the outside courtyard in the days of the Midbar, where you had the great Mizbeach HaChitzon, right? You see in that picture, that's the, the courtyard's gates, right? So how long, how big was the entryway? How wide was it? So it says like this, It was a hundred north and south. North to south, it was a hundred. East to west, on the east and the west side, it was 50 amot. Why does it say chamishim? Bachamishim, we'll see later on, not now. But it means 50 amot wide. The komach hamesh amot, and it was five amot high. Uchtiv, and it says there, v'chamesh esrei amak la'in la'katev, there were 15 amot. Out of the 50 amot wide, on the east side, 15 were on one side. Uchtiv v'la'katev ha'shenit mizeh u'mizeh l'shara chatev k'la'in chamesh esrei amak. And it says that these 15 were on both corners. There was they were, the corner was 15, and the other side was 15. So that takes up 30 of the amot, of the 50 amot. So what are you left with? You're left with 20 in the middle. Okay? So how that means, you're left with an entrance of 20 amot. So the Gemara is asking, Ma lahalan chomish beroch avesim, afkar chamesh beroch avesim. Just like there, it was five amot high. Okay? That's how high it was. It says, Koma chamesh amot. But it was 20 amot wide. Let the entranceway to a mavoi be an entranceway after even more than 10 amot, up to 20 amot. Okay? So the Gemara says, now, you might ask, one second, what, what, it says so it speaks about the height here too. It says five amot in height. So some Yishayim say that the Gemara's question is only when your height is like the height of the Shara Chatzet. If you have a mother that's only five amot high, then the Gemara is asking, let the entrance way be be able to be more than ten amot. Let it be twenty amot, just like we find by the Shara Chatzet. And the Gemara's question is only in such a case. It's a machlek is Rishonim. Um, others Rishonim say that's not that's not the why the Gemara mentions the height here. But the main kasha, whatever whatever it may be, is that let the entrance way to the Mavi be even more than ten amot 
wide and don't call it a breach and a problem for the Kora to fix once it's more than 10 amot wide. The, the, the Mishnah called for an urgent care of a tzurat apetach. If you want to fix that, you need a tzurat apetach. Otherwise, your Kora is not going to work. The Kora is nothing here. It's too, much, it's too wide. It says the Gemara, why? Let it be 20 amot wide and let the Kora work. Just like the Petach Shah Chatzer. So Gemara answers Petach Shah Chatzer Ikri, Petach Stam Alo Ikri. Says the Gemara, no. Because that, the Torah says clearly, is the Petach Shah Chatzer. But it's not a normal Petach. Okay? We don't ever find that a regular petach, that the, sorry, that the, the, the chatzer in the, in the courtyard in the midbar was called petach. It always had that, that accompanying name with it. Petach shara chatzer. As if like there's some regular petach, but this is the petach shara chatzer. So the normal petach is not that one. That one was special. That was the better, that one was 20 amount one, maybe because it had a surat pesach. Fine. But a normal petach is not going to be as wide as the petach shah chatzer. It's only that one. So therefore, you can't really derive anything from there. The Ibaitema, another reason why you can't learn from there is kik did claim Had it we derived that the entrance was 20 amount wide, because we said there were 15 to one side, 15 to the other, that takes up 30 of the 50. And now you're left with the remaining 20. So the Gemara says, no, because you know what it means? Kloyim chamesh katef, to each corner. It means the height. It means the height of the kloyim, these curtains, whether they were on the east side or the west or north or south, it doesn't matter what side, they were 15 amot high. How wide were they? It doesn't mention the width. Therefore, you'll never figure out how wide the entryway was. The height of the curtains were 15 amot. So the says, what? Are you serious? You're going to read the pasuk to mean 15 amot high? Gova! The The Torah says the height is five amot. So obviously, when it says fifteen amot, it's referring to the width of the corners. So the Gemara says, no, no, no. Home is Really, there were fifteen amot high. I the other pasuk says five. Five means five above the height of the mizbech. Because when you went into the curtains, you're in the in the Chatzer, where you had the Mizbeach, and it wasn't Derech Eretz for people to see the Kohen doing the Avodah on the top of Mizbeach. So they made sure that the curtains around the area where the Mizbeach was situated inside, in the Chatzer, went five amot, which is close to 10 feet higher than the top of the Mizbeach. So one Pasuk was referring to the, the height above the Mizbeach, and the other one was referring to the entire height. Okay. So the Gemara is saying, forget the Petach Shara Chatzer. Either there's a special Petach there, or because we don't even know what it is, because it was talking about the height. So the Gemara asks now, Rabbi Yehuda Mipitro Shul Ulam Gamar? Does Rabbi Yehuda learn from the entranceway of the Ulam? Vertenan, Vahadrochav Me'esem Amot Yema Ed, Velo Polig Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't argue about the width in our Mishnah. He only argued about the height. But if his source is sourced in the Petach of the Ulam, because he had a Pasuk from Navi, that Pasuk that he had, right? That he put together. Um, it said, El Petach Ulam Abayit. So therefore, there's a Pasuk describing a Petach as the Ulam's Petach, which is 40 amount in height. And that's how he knew that higher than 20 is fine. He should also argue about the width, because the width of the Ulam's Petach was 20 amot in width. And we don't find them arguing. He actually does argue. 
We find in the Brayton the Tanya v'halochem me'emes es ha'amoti ma'et. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, eno tzarich lama'et. Rabbi Yehuda says, yeah, you, you have a lot more to go. You have up to 20 amot. So the Gemara says, it's over lifloi b'makniti. So why didn't he argue in the Mishnah? So the Gemara says, poli b'gayi v'hu adil l'reichba. Okay? He argued in the height. And once you figure out why he's arguing, because he's going with the petach of the ulam, so you could already just apply that he's arguing in the, in the next part of the Mishnah as well. The Mishnayot were more succinct, that they were more concise, and the Brightot would generally, as the Ritzvah explains, would, uh, would, would, would explain more of the details of the Mishnah, but you can figure it out. Okay, so the Gemara says, Are you still telling me? Still don't understand. You tell me that Yehuda learned it from the Petra of the Ulam. He says 40 to 50. So according to Bar Kapara, it's, a, it's, a, it's a total exaggeration. It just means 100 is just a way of exaggerating. So you don't really know how high. So you can say that when Yehuda argued and he said not 20, but up to even 100, he meant a lot more. But really there was a limitation. The limit was 40 because he was learning from the Petach of the Ula. But According to the Nusra, the text that we have in the Brighter, that says, up that Rabbi Huda said, up to 40 and 50, my Guzma, there's absolutely no exaggeration in these numbers. Because we know that 40 is exactly what Rabbi Huda for sure allows. That's not an exaggeration. So when he says 40, it's not an exaggeration. So then when he adds 50, why would he add 50? unless he actually meant 50, right? So he must be going more than 40 because he means it. He means 50. So it says, it says the Gemara, Bishlam al-Rabi Yudah Abayim Gomen Pisra Shululam el-Chamishim in-Nole. The Bach takes out the words of Yudah. Bishlam al-Rabi Gomen Pisra Shululam. 40, I understand, because he learned it from the Ulam. That's 40 high. But where did he get 50 from? Omer Rav Chiz de Homas Nisa Atis el the Mishnah, um, the 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 brighter, the following brighter actually misled Rav to think that the pshat in Rabbi Yehuda, the explanation of Yehuda in the Mishnah, is because he learned it from the petach of the Ula. Listen to this brighter, the Tanya. A mobi that is higher than twenty amot. Yoter, which is more than the petach of the Hechel, lower it. Who savar? So Rav thought. Rav Chizda is explaining. The Rav thought. Mi de Rabbanan. Mi pitcho shol Hechel gamri. Rabbi Yudim pitcho shol Omkama. If the Rabbanan learned it from the petach of the Hechel, which was 20 Amotai, so Rabbi Yudim learned it from the petach of the Ulam, which was 40 Amotai. The lohi, but it's not so. The Gemara is retracting. Rabbi Yehuda learned it from the entrance of the kings. The king's palaces are way higher than 40, even higher than the Ulam. And therefore, there is actually no she or no measurement at all. You can make the entry to the Mavi as high as you want because we find entryways that are that high. Where? We find them by the king's palaces. So therefore, Rabbi Yehuda says, even though the Torah says petach shel heichel, that doesn't bother me. There are entryways in the world that are much higher. And we actually find psukim, the Tosvot Torah says. I told you before you need a pasuk that describes those palace entryways as petach, where we have them in psukim in Megillus Esther, by Achashverosh's uh, palace. It says the petach over there. Pesach Beis HaMelech. Yeah. So, 
and in the Psukim of Shlomo Amalek's palace as well. So the Gemara is now saying that Rabbi Yehuda learned it from the Ptachim of the Ula of the Ammonot, and we have Psukim for that too. So the Gemara says, V'rabonon, imi piso shalechol giniri, the boat losses kehechol. If the Rabonon learned it from the Pesach of the Hechol, Nukasha, so why, do, why don't you need doors? In order to allow one to carry, you should need doors in order to have a real entryway. The Hechel had doors. So why don't you learn in a Mishnah later on, in Eruvin, it says, Beit Shammai says you need a Lechi and a Kora. I never told you that because we don't pass like that. Beit says a Lechi or a Kora. That's enough. You should need doors. If you're really deriving everything from the entrance to the Hechel. So the Gemara says, Dal Hechel it's need Ba'al Muhdabi. Which means, they only place doors there in the Hechel for modesty, so you shouldn't be able to see what's going on there. But not for the enclosure, to make an enclosure. Like, like all other doors in the world. Okay. Therefore, when the Torah says petach, the entryway, it's not referring to the doors in the entryway. It's only referring, even without the doors, it's called an entryway. And, and, and therefore, we don't need doors at all. It says the Gemara El Meato, if you're telling me that you learned the shi'ur, the measurement of the entryway of the Mavi, from the petach, from the entry of the heichal, lo tehani leitzurata petach. You should not be able to use the tzuret petach, which is a stick on each side with one stick going across the two, in order to be machshir, to correct and to make fine um, on, on, on a breach that's more than ten amot. Why? Because the heichal had a tzuret pesach What did it have? It had two doorposts. And a two doorposts and a I don't know it's called the lintel, the lintel, on top. So had a mashkoif on top. And yet, how wide was it? Only ten amot. But more than that, okay. More than that, it wouldn't have been called a petach. Because if it would have, then Hashem would have made it wider. And it would have, it would have been as wide as the petach of the ulam, Tosfot explains. Which was much wider. Okay? Which is 20 amot wide. If the doorpost, the tzuret pesach in the petach of the heichal, actually rendered it a petach even more than 10 amot, so why did Hashem minimize the width of the petach lehechel to half the size of the antechamber that led into it, if not for the fact that because otherwise it would not be a petach anymore. The Torah wanted to call it an entryway. So the Gemara is proving from here that even if you have a tzurit a petach, it can only be called an entryway and not a breach unless it's 10 amot wide. So Allah to answer why did we learn in our Mishnah Yeshua Tzurit HaPesach Abba Bishoruch Me'as Amas Eino Tzarich Lama'et If it has a Tzurit HaPesach even if it's more than 10 Amot you don't have to mi- minimize it. So the Gemara says Midu Hu Taima El Lirav This cash is only on Rav because according to Rav he said the Chacham learned it from the Petach of the Hechel and Homat Le Rav Yehudu L'Chiya Barav Kamei De Rav and Rav actually learned in our Mishnah that when it, when it says it doesn't say it says he said no amend that fix that and you know why because um, Rav is telling you that precisely your kashi is 100% right and a tzurat pesach can only correct um, a breach 
that's up to 10 amot wide and not more, because we learned it from the Petach of the Hechel, that was not more than 10 amot wide. Okay? So according to Rav, um, that is actually true. Okay, Bezat Hashem will continue this tomorrow. tomorrow. Hazak Baruch, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.